Bob Duco, evangelical Christian radio talk show host and apologist, claims proof for the scientific accuracy and truth of the Bible can be found in its pre-scientific knowledge about the invisible atoms that make up the material universe. You know, it's interesting that everything in existence is created by, it's made up of atoms. These are invisible elements. How do they know that everything was made up of invisible elements? Hebrews 11.3 says, The universe was formed at God's command so that what was seen was not made out of what was visible. It's not at all clear how Duco can equate invisible elements with atoms. There certainly is no intent on the part of the author to explain what he means in any sort of scientific terms. The verse Duco quotes is vague and out of context. This entire opening of Hebrews 11 is about faith and what faith is. It opens with the famous line, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Is faith to be understood as the evidence for atomic particles? The invisible things of faith here are the things hoped for and the transcendent realities of God and Jesus Christ. The same idea is reflected in Romans 8, 24. Hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? It's plainly obvious that the latter part of verse 3 in Hebrews 11 is referring to the former. In other words, the first part of the verse, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, is attributing the creation of the universe, or, in the original Greek, ion, referring to the world in which we live, the things we can see, and not necessarily the entire universe, to God, who is not visible. The second part of the verse, what is seen was not made out of what was visible, simply repeats what was just stated, that the things we can see were made by what cannot be seen, namely God. It is from these visible things, the world around us, that we have evidence of that which is invisible and created them, God. The same idea of God forming the world from the invisible is found elsewhere in Scripture, in Romans 1.20, for example. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Are we supposed to understand, given Duco's interpretation, that God's invisible qualities are actually atoms? Ironically, in books Duco rejects as detracting from the truth of the Bible, the idea also sees a reflection. For example, in the apocryphal book of 2 Maccabees 7.28. So I urge you, my child, to look at the sky and the earth, consider everything you see there, and realize that God made it all from nothing. And then, especially in 2 Enoch 24.2. And I bowed down to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved, all that you see, all things that are standing finished, I tell to you, even before the very beginning, all that I created from non-being, and the visible things from the invisible. This is a theological view of the universe, not a scientific one. Contrast the biblical assertion that the visible world merely comes from the invisible God of the Hebrews with the Greek philosopher Leucippus of Miletus and his student Democritus of Abdera. In the 5th century BC, Leucippus came up with the idea that everything in the visible world was made up of tiny, invisible, and indestructible particles called atoms, and Democritus took the idea and expounded upon it. As explained in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, the atomists held that there are two fundamentally different kinds of realities composing the natural world, atoms and void. Atoms are from the Greek adjective atomos, or atomon, indivisible, are infinite in number and various in size and shape, and perfectly solid, with no internal gaps. They move about in an infinite void, repelling one another when they collide or combining into clusters by means of tiny hooks and barbs on their surfaces which become entangled. Other than changing place, they are unchangeable, ungenerated and indestructible. All changes in the visible objects of the world of appearance are brought about by relocations of these atoms. In Aristotelian terms, the atomists reduce all change to change of place, 
macroscopic objects in the world that we experience are really clusters of these atoms. Changes in the objects we see, qualitative changes or growths say, are caused by rearrangements or additions to the atoms composing them. While the atoms are eternal, the objects compounded out of them are not. Clusters of atoms moving in the infinite void come to form cosmoi or worlds as a result of a circular motion that gathers atoms up into a whirl, creating clusters within it. These cosmoi are impermanent. Our world and the species within it have arisen from the collision of atoms moving about in such a whirl and will likewise disintegrate in time. Such an explanation based upon observations about the natural world is a scientific one, nothing at all like the vague theological musings of the biblical authors. Duco and similar apologists reach too far in trying to state that the Bible is scientifically accurate in predicting the discovery of atoms when no such idea really exists in Scripture. Indeed, as already mentioned, the Greek idea for atoms came about in the 5th century BCE, 500 to 600 years before the author of Hebrews would put his pen to parchment. The word for Adam, Adamos, already existed by the time Hebrews was written, and yet we don't find it there in verse 3. If Adams were what the New Testament author of Hebrews had in mind, why wasn't he inspired to use that word to dispel any doubts about his intent? The answer, of course, is clear. The idea was nowhere in his mind. The writer of Hebrews had no more an awareness of Adams when he wrote that verse than he was aware some future biblical apologist would use it to support such an idea. Funding for this program was provided in part by the generous contributions of viewers like you via Patreon. Consider joining them at www.patreon.com forward slash Bible Skeptic. Thank you. Thank you.